Hey, come. Lots of room to spread out, you guys, through here, down here. You guys will have a wonderful chance for moving around here and taking some pictures a little bit later. Bibles up, get your notebooks up, because I think you may want to take notes on this. Oh, oh yes. Any place you'd like. Oh, nice cool place to go. Oh, yeah. Well, just, just as an example, I mean, you, you notice what I'm trying to do is that every place we go, I'm trying to find shade in the coolest place possible. I mean, that's... that's no, that's... <laughs> Okay, a good rabbi is going to understand that he's got his Talmudim and he's going to be trying to make sure that they're comfortable because he's trying to teach them something. It doesn't make sense to stuff. Exactly. Um, besides, God is shade, so we should sit under his care and not back out there. So, But now, before we get into this, let me explain what you're in. This is an olive press. This is probably Canaanite. Okay? The Edomites probably use this as well, but this is probably Canaanite even before that, but definitely Edomite and Hellenistic as well. So the Greeks were here, the Edomites were here, and so on. Now let me describe this a little bit for you, and that is when you have an olive press, the Hebrew word for press is got. Say got. 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 Press. Here's what they would do. They would get the olives in the fall because they're harvested in September and October. They would be all over these places. They would go out there and bring the olives in here, and more than likely, they would either have a man, probably not a man doing this, probably a donkey, and you'll notice that this stone here, okay, that's okay, you have this stone in this little bowl, which is attached to that big um, log going out to this side, and more than likely, here, you would have your donkey attached somehow by a yoke, and they would probably blindfold the poor donkey and put a little cure in front of his face. And you go round and round and round and round, and they would just take the olives, put them in there to break their skins. Because you know the skins on an olive are, are, are hard. Because they want to break that. They break those out and they would scoop them up and they would put them in burlap bags. Because they would cut them up. They would take them, and that's not the press. This is part of the pressing process. So they bring them into the gat. They would take them down here. And they would bring them down into this area, and they would put them in kind of burlap bags. Now the burlap bags, if you take a look on the left side, there is, well you can see on the left side and the right side, there are two of these indentations through that wall, and on the left side they have a cedar log, a, actually a cypress, not a cedar, a cedar log stuck into the back wall with a hole. <coughs> they have that in there. And that log is stuck in there pretty well. But can you see the bags that they have as a model down there? In that little room back there? All the olives would be put in there, all the bulk and everything. Okay? They would put them in there after their, their, their skins were cracked. And then they would take those weights, which are 800 pounds a piece. I don't know how many men would have to lift that. They would lift those things, and then the log would start crushing the grapes, the grapes, the, the olives. Okay, slowly but surely. Now the first olive oil that comes out is the pure stuff. E V O O. Huh? E V O O. E V O O? Extra virgin olive. Oh. Extra virgin. It could, could very well be. That's what it is. It's the best stuff. The okay? Best, yeah. And that's the stuff that they would use in the temple. They would need the best oil, olive oil and the rest of it after that. But in other words, you got that oil coming through, and more than likely they had a channel and Probably in the back someplace they would have a channel down where they would actually take the olive oil. I think it was actually below. 
because they would actually have the big jars below where all of the olive oil will be collected. They would actually seal it up, put it on their wagons from the back. They probably had a, a little loading dock in the back, and they would take it out. Now, so that's that process. Now, there's a couple of things that you're going to see here with these two uh, niches. Notice the little niche right in the middle. Now, somebody has scrapped, scratched on their next uh, yawa or whatever. I don't think that's real. No, I think somebody actually got done and actually scratched some stuff on there because I, when I was here the first time, there was nothing there. They believe uh, that that was a niche for an Edomite god, the god Quos, Q-O-S, say Q-O-S, Quos. Quos. Okay? That was the main Edomite god. They think that they probably had that, or they actually found in some of these places little statuettes to Apollo. Uh, and and um, trying to think of the other Greek gods. That's not important. So more than likely, this is more Hellenistic, uh, and probably not many Jewish people, but I wanted you to see this olive press. The reason why I wanted you to see this olive press is this. Let's take a look at this. Who's got John 18? Okay. We'll get to John 18. Oh, and by the way, just for a piece of information, this stone... Okay, this round cut stone that would actually crush these things is called the Memel stone. And that would be the, actually the ones that would cut through these, and then they would have these cypress logs in here. Now let's take a look at John 18, verses 1 through 2, and if you could, James, you have, right? Yeah. Okay. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Sidon, where was a garden to which he entered and his disciples and Jude. Judas also looked for him knew the place, for Jesus oftentimes restored there with his disciples. Resorted there. Resorted there. Now, a couple of things. This is important so you understand the culture. He went across the Kidron Brook to a garden. In Hebrew, a garden is called... Now, the, he, the Greek word there is not garden, okay? It's a Hebrew word that is associated, it's a Greek word that's associated with a Hebrew word, and the Hebrew word is gan. Say gan. Gan. Now, is a gan a garden? Yes, it is, but it's a very special garden. A gan is a terraced place for growing olive trees. Mount of Olives? It's a factory. This hill grew olive trees on a terraced garden. It's a gan, the Greek word it, you imply like a garden with flowers and benches and places you went for picnics. And you had little boat rides. I'm sorry, it wasn't. This is a manufacturing place. The second thing <coughs> is, okay, it says where Jesus went a lot many times. What do Jewish people do every year, three times a year? Go to the temple? Yeah, why? Feasts. Feasts. They're required to go there three times at the three feasts. The three feasts that are required are? Passover? Shavuot. Shavuot? No. Sukkot. Sukkot. Those are the three. Sukkot's in the fall, Passover, and Shavuot are in the spring. Okay? So Jesus is, let's say he's 30. How many times has he been there? 120 times. His parents. To, to, to Jerusalem. Okay? So he was there. I mean, look at Mary. She travels 100 miles to offer two stupid pigeons. That's a Torah girl. Wow. A hundred miles just offered two stupid pigeons at the temple for her purification. How you doing? But she does it. You think she took Jesus with Joseph and they went to the temple three times a year? But, but that's even bigger. They were there all. And we say they're stupid now, but back then they were. That was even worse. I mean, they were really weird, okay? <laughs> a pregnant girl going a hundred, you know, it's eight weeks after her, you know, pregnancy. She's going hundred miles to offer two pigeons? Give me a break, okay? So Coming here, it says Jesus was here on a regular basis. Jerusalem is a city, the old city. You'll be in the old city. That's as big as it was. 35,000 people. That's it. Passover, they did this. Herod one time came to the Pharisees and said, or to came to the priests and he said, listen, how many people are in this city uh, during the feasts? And so the priest said, you know what we can do? We can count the livers of the lambs. Because every lamb is primarily for 10 people. You have one lamb, 10 people, 10 people, one lamb. That's kind of the rule of thumb. So we can give you an estimate if we count the livers. Okay? They counted 600,000 livers. Jeez. Oh, that was for what? For Passover? For Passover. 
How many people? Six million. Where are you going to fit six million people in a town for 35,000? Guess where they camped out? The Mount of Olives. And Jesus hung out there a lot. Why? What a good place to camp. Passover? Shabbat was just a couple of weeks ago. Look, can you imagine camping out at night? Remember how cool it was last night? Yeah, you had a couple of blankets and so you're fine. Build a little fire. Be with your friends. Cook a little kosher meat. Oh, you can have a good time. Okay? So I'm saying, I mean, were there any bugs last night? None. I mean, you, this is pleasant weather. This is a pleasant place to camp out. So the thing is, is that and when you read that story, understand the culture. He just didn't go there. To, it's a good place to pray, too, if there's nobody around. But when he did this, the night of his Seder, when he goes out there, this is, I mean, this is RV City. I mean, seriously, I mean, there's just thousands of people up there, and he's trying to find a quiet place to pray. And Judas knew where he's going. Why? He's been with the guy for three years. Twelve times already? This is probably the twelfth time. Okay. Now let's go to Mark 14. Who's got Mark 14? Okay. Verses 32 to 33. They came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here until I have prayed. And he took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be very distressed and troubled. Now let's do this. Matthew 26, verse 36. So, Zach, Matthew 26, verse 36. <laughs> then Yeshua came with them to the place called Je Gethsemane. Gethsemane? Gethsemane, and said, to the top ones, sit here while I go over there in Christ. Okay, now you've got the verses. That was written in English from the Greek, but they spoke Hebrew. They were at a garden, not a garden, a terrace place. Now think about this logically. If you're a business person and you are into the olive business, do you want your workers harvesting olives and carrying them up the bag with these bags up the steep hill of Mount of Olives? Or do you want them to harvest the olives on the guns and walk down? down. Walk down. Makes sense, yes? So at the bottom, what should you find at the bottom if you're an olive grower and you produce olive oil? One of these, right? <coughs> Got Shemanim. This is a Got Shemanim, a press for oils. What's the only oil that they press? Olives. Got Shemanim. Got Shemanim. Get Semani. Get Semani. Got Shemanim. Jesus went to a Got Shemanim to pray. Because it's too darn crowded on the Mount of Olives to pray. Because everybody's camping out and it's Passover. He probably knew the guy that owned it. Where is he going to go to pray that it's quiet? Shemanese. Now, did, was he? Was he in one? We don't know. We really don't know. My suspicion is yes, based upon the next thing I want to do, but it's a quiet place. Maybe he had Peter and James and John lay the city right over here and said, please, you guys stay over here. I'm going to go down and pray. Or maybe here, stay here. I'm going to go down here and pray. Guess what they found at the bottom of the Mount of Olives? One of these! Huh. Right at the bottom. I've got Shemanese, a big one! And guess what's used for today? And that's why you can't get in there. A group of monastic monks have turned it into an underground chapel. Wow. When you go down there, you can't even tell it was a God chimney. They got pews, and they got benches, and they got the altar, and they got the candles, and they got the little red thing that the Catholics have in there, and they have this stuff, and you can't go in there because it's a monastery. So two archaeologists asked the monastic order, can we go in there, please? This is a very strict monastic order. They said, yes, but there will be no monks there. We don't want you touching everything. And guess what they found? Two of those. And holes in the back wall where the cedar, the cedar logs would have been put in. The rest of it, they saw some of the trenches. Everything else is gone. It's an olive press. And they found one of these. Above here, if you can see, there's a hole. Yeah. You need air circulation to process olives. It has to be done at a certain temperature. And at the top of this, they found one of those that's closed off today. 
when I take you to the Mount of Olives, I want you to see this. We can't get in there. This is why I want you to see this, because this is what I'm understand like. the deep message. And understand it's deeper and richer and bigger than you ever thought as we come back to our Jewish roots of our faith. That's a really important thing. Because there's no place called Gethsemane. It doesn't exist. Only in two books of the Bible. 